Hi viewers, welcome back to my class on mechanics of materials. In the previous class, we obtained Lemay's equation for a thick cylinder. Lemay's equation gives an expression for the variation of hoop stress and radial pressure across the cylinder walls. In this class, I'll explain how to calculate the longitudinal stress induced in a thick cylinder. Consider a thick cylinder with the internal radius Ri and external radius R0 and length L. Now it is subjected to internal fluid pressure Pi and external pressure P0. Due to this internal fluid pressure which is acting on the inner curved surface and this pressure will stretch the walls in the circumferential direction. Okay. So that will induce hoop stress that is circumferential stress and also it induces radial pressure which will be compressive in nature. Lemay's equation gives expressions for this radial pressure and hoop stress variation and we have seen that uh, both varies parabolically with the radius of the cylinder. So that is due to the pressure on the inner curved surface, fluid pressure on the inner curved surface, hoop stress and radial pressure is induced and that is varying with the radius. But in this case, fluid pressure acting on the end surface of the cylinder, if you consider the fluid pressure acting on the end surface, so this is due to the inside fluid pressure from inside the cylinder, it is acting on this end phase and it is also acting in the other end and it will be acting in opposite direction. This will induce a stretching on the cylinder walls. Now if the cylinder is subjected to external pressure from outside also fluid pressure will be acting and it will be acting in the leftward direction. If it is acting rightward this will be acting leftward like this. So this is a fluid pressure acting on the external surface of the cylinder. This is end phase of the cylinder. So on this end phase external pressure is acting. So it will be acting towards the surface. So from inside the fluid pressure is acting like this and from outside fluid pressure is acting in opposite direction. So the difference in force will create a stretching on the walls. So this difference in force will be acting towards right and the other end also difference in force will be acting towards the opposite direction that will exert pressure on the cylinder walls in the longitudinal direction. It will stretch the cylinder and the length will increase because of the stretching and uh, it will induce longitudinal strain on the cylinder walls. Now this axial force, this axial force has to be resisted by the cylinder cross section. So I have shown that uh, sectional view of the cylinder. So this is a cross section. So I have not shown the full cylinder. Okay, This is a uh, sectional uh, view. This cross section has to resist. Every cross section has to resist this axial force. So this cross sectional area you can calculate. And you can also calculate that it is axial force. That axial force which is pulling the cylinder divided by this cross-sectional area of the cylinder walls will give the longitudinal stress induced or axial stress induced in the cylinder walls. Now this force is resisted by this cross-sectional area. This hatched area is resisting this axial force and you can now find out the longitudinal stress. Now the internal force acting on the cylinder end phase will be exerting a force in the outward direction and this uh, force from inside you can calculate as pressure into this area. So internal pressure Pi into this area uh, will give the force from inside. So this pressure is Pi inside diameter is Di. So area of this will be pi by 4 into Di square. So force from inside is Pi into pi by 4 Ti square. So that is the force from inside. 
At the same time, there is a force from outside. If a cylinder is subjected to external pressure, there will be a force from outside due to the fluid pressure acting on the end phase of this uh, cylinder. So this end phase fluid pressure is acting P0 and the outside diameter is fits D0. Outside diameter is D0. So fluid pressure P0 is acting on this uh, end phase. So that will uh, give a force f naught is equal to pressure into area area is pi by 4 d naught square so this will give the force from outside so force from inside force from outside the net force you can calculate assuming that uh, internal pressure is more usually the cylinder will be subjected to larger internal pressure so f y will be more than f naught so you will get the bursting force in the longitudinal direction or the force which is acting outward the net force which is acting on the end surface of the cylinder as fl which is the bursting force in the longitudinal direction that is fy minus f naught pi into pi by 4 di square minus p naught into pi by 4 d naught square so that gives a bursting force you also know the area which resists this force so so this force is uh, fl is acting like this okay and the other side also fl will be acting in the opposite direction that will stretch the cylinder walls and this uh, force has to be resisted by the cross section area of the cylinder and the area resisting you can calculate as pi by 4 into d naught the outer diameter is d naught inside diameter is da so pi by 4 into d naught square minus da square or pi into r naught square minus ri square in terms of radius pi into r naught square minus ri square that will give the resisting area so you got the bursting force or axial force acting on the cylinder and you got the cross section area which resists the this axial force but in case of thin cylinder we have approximated this area since the thickness of the walls was less in that case we have calculated that as pi dt but in this case it's not possible we have to calculate it as pi by 4 into d naught square minus d a square so now you can calculate the longitudinal stress longitudinal stress is and this bursting force divided by area bursting force is p a into pi by 4 d a square minus p naught into pi by 4 d naught square divided by area is pi by 4 into d naught square minus d a square now this pi by 4 is common you can take it outside and denominator also pi by 4 is there so that pi by 4 which you have taken outside will cancel out you get p a into d a square minus p naught into d naught square divided by d naught square minus d a square so p a into d a square minus p naught into d naught square divided by d naught square minus d a square this is the axial stress or longitudinal stress so now d i is 2 r i so 2 r i square 4 r i square so you get 4 r i square here 4 r naught square and here again 4 r naught square minus 4 r i square 4 is common which you can take outside and that will cancel out so you get p a r i square instead of d you replace by r so p a r i square minus p naught r naught square divided by r naught square minus r i square so this is the longitudinal stress and the longitudinal stress is not varying with the radius uh, longitudinal stress is constant and on the inside fiber as well as outside fiber the same longitudinal stress will be induced so that means inside wall the stretching and the force acting and the outside wall the force acting axial force acting or axial force resisted per unit area will be same so inside wall is subjected to same stress even the outside surface in the longitudinal direction is subjected to same stress so inside also like at any radius you take it is subjected to same stress.
that may not be true for the end surface when it comes to the near to the end of the cylinder there will be some variation for this axial stress and with the radius but away from the end this stress is going to be constant and the longitudinal stress will not vary with respect to radius but whereas we have seen that hoop stress that is which is acting in the circumferential direction is more at the inner surface and uh, minimum at the outer surface and it uh, decreases parabolically across the uh, cylinder walls and even the radial pressure varies parabolically whereas longitudinal stress and uh, longitudinal strain is constant in a thick cylinder if the cylinder is not subjected to any external pressure p naught will be zero and uh, you will get p a d a square by d naught square minus d a square as a axial stress or a longitudinal stress so here also p naught will cancel you can in terms of radius you can write p a r i square by r naught square minus r i square so that is when it's no external pressure you are getting this expression for longitudinal stress now let us uh, calculate the circumferential and longitudinal strain induced on the cylinder walls as in the case of a thin cylinder we can calculate the circumferential strain and longitudinal strain and we also know that circumferential strain is equal to the diameter strain and we can calculate the circumferential strain as sigma c by e minus nu sigma l by e plus nu pr by e so this is the additional term which comes in case of a thick cylinder in case of a thin cylinder we are not considered this radial pressure and we neglected the effect of radial pressure in inducing the strain because thin cylinders will be subjected to a very low internal fluid pressure so this effect of radial pressure was neglected in calculating the circumferential strain for a thin cylinder but in case of a thick cylinder this radial pressure which is compressive so that's why the uh, sign has changed lateral effect in the circumferential direction become positive because it is compressive this compressive stress is in, and trying to increase the length of the circumference so that's why you have got a positive sign whereas longitudinal stress is trying to uh, decrease the circumference and uh, circumferential stress is uh, inducing a direct strain and it stretches the circumference now this circumferential strain varies with the radius inside the fiber circumferential stress will be more and uh, radial pressure will be more and you will get the maximum strain on the inner uh, surface so with the minimum radius with the internal radius you will be getting maximum uh, strain circumferential strain and this strain varies from inside to outside and outside fiber will be subjected to minimum strain in case of a thick cylinder whereas in uh, thin cylinder we neglected the variation of circumferential strain so here we need to find out the circumferential strain uh, based on the radius at any radius so if you want to, if you have to find out the circumferential strain on the uh, inner surface of the cylinder you should substitute the hoop stress at the inner radius and radial pressure then you can find out the uh, circumferential strain longitudinal strain we know that it is going to be a constant for a thick cylinder and uh, you can calculate it as sigma l by e minus nu sigma c by e plus nu pr by e in this case also the stresses are varying except the longitudinal stress these two are varying both are decreasing with the increase in radius but both are uh, giving opposite effects and circumferential stress is decreasing the longitudinal strain whereas radial pressure is uh, increasing the longitudinal strain so both are giving opposite effect and this uh, summation will be a constant so the entire uh, longitudinal uh, strain will remain constant so in today's class we learned how to calculate the longitudinal stress induced on a thick cylinder this is the expression when the uh, external pressure is neglected and when external pressure exists you have to use these equations to find out the 
longitudinal stress and also you can find out the uh, circumferential strain or diameter strain at what radius you have to find out the circumferential strain you need to uh, substitute the uh, stress values corresponding to that point and find out the uh, circumferential strain or diameter strain and also you can calculate the longitudinal strain using this expression so once you get the circumferential strain and longitudinal strain you can also find out the change in circumference and change in length of the cylinder that's all for today thank you for watching